Greetings, ladies and gentlefish, and today I thought I'd bring you the next uh, video in kind of my beginner's guide series. Uh, and this is all going to be about magazine fed guns, autoloaders as they're often called, including autocannons and basically the, the hopefully the plethora. Well, ish, we'll get to that in a second though. So, um, historically, these fell into a couple of different categories. You basically either had guns designed to shoot aircraft or guns designed to shoot things on the ground. So if you were trying to shoot an aircraft from either another aircraft or the ground, um, you know, it, it takes some effort to hit them. And so one of the easiest ways to do that is just to spray a lot of shots up towards them. And um, if you're going to do that, you know, you want a rapid firing gun. And the way to get a rapid firing gun is to mount a magazine onto it, you know, like a machine gun, basically. And so, um, if you look through the game, you'll tend to find there's a bunch of different, um, uh, basically machine guns, for instance. There's an example of a machine gun, 15mm Baser machine gun on the uh, Vickers Light Mark 6C. And things like the Pom Pom and the Boffers guns on the British tanks. These are, these are converted anti-aircraft guns. Um, and so these have magazine feed designed you know, to try and uh, take out aircraft. Um, the other side of things, we have guns that were never designed to shoot at aircraft, they were designed to shoot at ground targets. And in their case, the logic behind an autoloader was not to um, pump a lot of shots very quickly into a particular area, but it was to have uh, a way of replacing a crew member, essentially. So, on a tank, your shells will be split up into the ready ammunition and the rest. The ready ammunition is the stuff that is in the turret, that is close to the loader so that he can just shove it in the gun relatively quickly but you don't have the space to store all of your ammunition up there um, so once you have depleted that the loader would then have to get shells out of the rest of the tank out of the hull and that loading process would take considerably longer this distinction between ready ammunition and the rest of the ammunition is not made in World of Tanks with one exception the autoloaders so the idea of an autoloading gun and the French were the best known for this the idea of an auto-loading gun was to have your ready ammunition in a pre-made up uh, magazine or of some description that the crew would then put into the gun and then an automated firing mechanism would run you through the um, that magazine and once that was depleted you retreated to a safe location away from the main fight and your crew then got a new magazine and plonked it in. Jobs are good em. Um, and, and this basically saved on having a loader as a specific crew member and possibly, although I'm not sure on this, possibly also made the gunfire slightly faster while you were going through those that ready ammunition as it was called. Anyway, um, referring to what we actually have in game, oh just before I do I, I would quickly like to say this is a guide designed for newer players or people who are not very familiar with autoloaders. I am not an expert on using autoloading guns so if you are looking for pro tips on how to maximize your damage output this is probably not the video for you. This is more for people who are just coming across the gun type um, or just want some basic tips. So. Um, you get autoloaders basically at every different tier of the game, um, or, or magazine fed guns of some description. Now, in this lot, I'm going to include auto cannons, machine guns, proper autoloaders. You know, I'm just going to whack them all together ish, um, and we're going to talk about them all collectively because they all essentially perform the same role. Within game, an autoloader or an auto loading mechanism on a gun allows you to output a large amount of damage in a relatively short period of time at the expense of a very long reloading cycle to follow. That's the idea. So often at lower tiers this tends to be exemplified by little machine guns, so like you have here, this is a tier 1 machine gun, um, and at higher tiers it's a proper auto loading gun. Um, but the sort of thing you are looking at um, when dealing with these weapons and I'm actually going to quickly flit to the AMX here. So the sort of thing um, that enables you to immediately recognize an auto-loading gun in the tech tree is this little symbol here, these three shells underneath the gun. So if we have a look at the tech tree, for instance, just looking at the tech line, um, let's have a look at, for instance, a vehicle that I know has both non-auto-loading and auto-loading uh, weapons. This is the AT-7. And here you can see under one of the guns it has these little three shells, um, this little symbol. That means that that gun is magazine fed. 
rather than just conventional single shot. So the stats of the gun look slightly different. So here's an example. Um, it gives you the number of shells in the magazine when it's fully loaded, the time between loading of shells, so that's within the magazine, um, the time to load in a fresh magazine, and then you have your standard penetration, damage, dispersion, aiming time, etc. So just to give you an example how quickly uh, the AMX here, 1375, can fire. Um, it would take you 16 seconds to completely load the magazine and then if you were to just hold down the trigger it would empty that ma magazine in another 10 seconds. Six shells, the first one's already loaded, two seconds between, uh, between every successive shell, another 10 seconds. And then you would go through the reloading cycle again. So it unloads six shells in a grand total of 26 seconds. And the game reckons that gives this an effective rate of fire of 13.85 rounds a minute. Now what you will find, generally speaking, is that this rate of fire is lower than the comparable rate of fire on another tank of, with a similar caliber gun of the same class, at the same tier. Um, and that's because the autoloader allows you to output um, a large number of shells in a small period of time. So, for example, two second delay between shells once you have the magazine loaded at the expense of a much longer aiming cycle. So you get this increased burst damage, as it's called. But if you're caught while you're reloading, you're vulnerable because you have a very long reload time for your whole magazine. Often autoloaders also suffer with regard to soft stats on the gun. Accuracy, aiming time, give you an example here. This gun might um, have a two second delay between shells if you just hold the trigger down but the gun has a 2.3 second aiming time, meaning that it won't actually fully aim um, if you just hold the trigger down. And so if you want to have the best accuracy on your shots, which you might do, especially since 9.6 is now out, then you want more of a, then you probably want to fully aim your shots, which means that there will be slightly longer between you, uh, between each of your shells as you unload. So basically the idea of an autoloader within the game is to get this enhanced damage output for a short period of time. As you might expect, the presence of an autoloader on a tank tends to dictate a lot of the features about that machine, and often you give up quite a lot for the ability to mount an autoloading gun. Um, so bear that in mind. Give you an example, the French tanks, so for example the AMX 1375, in order to mount an autoloading gun, com so comparing the 1375 to another tier 6 light tank, you'll tend to find that the other tank will be faster more manoeuvrable, have better gun depression, better gun elevation, um, and better reticule bloom as you move the turret. Basically, the, the gun will be more reliable. So the AMX pays an awfully steep cost to have this auto-loading gun. And I'm just using the AMX 1375 here as an example to kind of demonstrate the sort of thing I'm talking about. So, talking about auto-loaders in general, I'm going to split them up into three relatively distinct types. I'm not going to talk about tank destroyers or artillery. Autoloading TDs and RT are much less common um, and they're a little bit different, but I'm just going to talk about regular turreted tanks. I'm going to split the autoloaders up into low tier, light and heavy. Light and heavy does not necessarily refer to the tank class, it's just a definition that I'm giving it. So let's start off at um, with low tier autoloaders and the sort of characteristics you can expect. So, why am I say why am I giving low tier um, autoloaders or magazine fed guns a different uh, separate category? Well, I think they function differently enough to higher tier autoloaders that they can be thought of as a separate entity or a little subcategory. So, what you tend to find with a low tier autoloader is that it outputs a phenomenal amount of damage relative to the hit point pool of that tier. So, the um, to give you an example. Here is the Cruiser 4. It has 230 hit points, which is pretty standard for a tier 3 light tank, which is what this is. The gun has four shells in the magazine. Each one of them will do an average of 50 damage. So, it will uh, with one magazine do 200 damage, which is enough to cripple a same tier light tank. It will kill a lower tier light tank. 
Now you could make a similar case for higher tier light tanks in their damage output but the difference is when you're down here at the lower tiers most of your tanks are uh, light tanks um, and so that effect becomes much more felt, much more pronounced. So it's that damage potential partly that defines a low tier light tank. However, what else defines it? Well, you tend to find that lower tier light tanks have very, very poor penetration, such as the light Mark 6C. This gun, for instance, um, gets a grand total of, where is it, 27 millimeters of penetration, which is terrible. It's absolutely awful. Um, so, you're not going to be winning any sniping matches with this gun. Even the Cruiser Mark IV, that has a higher penetration of 63, loses penetration very rapidly with range. So what does this mean? Basically, low-tier auto-loading guns like to be used at close range where they're bad accuracy, bad penetration, and the fact that they lose lots of penetration with range, where all that doesn't really matter. Um, and you're just left with very destructive guns for their tier up against relatively weakly armoured targets. So what's the sort of play style you can expect with lower tier um, autoloaders? Well, it will really depend upon what sort of map you're on and what sort of matchmaking you're in. Generally speaking, low tier autoloaders are overpowered when they're top tier and rather lacklustre when they're bottom tier because when they're top tier, their relative lack of penetration doesn't really matter and you can just use the full damage potential of your magazine. And when they're low tier, the lack of penetration becomes very noticeable. Um, and you struggle to damage much. So, if you're using a low tier autoloader, you might want to spend the earlier part of the game doing some spotting. As I say, it depends on the map. But don't be afraid to get into close range engagements. So to give you an example with the Cruiser 4, the arm is pretty bad, the size is quite large, but it will output 200 damage, and it only takes 6 seconds to reload the magazine, which is a short amount of time. So you output 200 damage, spend 6 seconds reloading, that's another 200 damage, and rinse and repeat. Which allows you to absolutely murder um, your opponents, assuming that they are a similar tier, and equally poorly armoured. And so that's the kind of play style you end up with um, as a lower tier light tank. So without further ado, let's jump into a little bit of gameplay with the Cruiser 4. Here we go with the low tier gameplay example. I'm in the Cruiser 4, British tier 3 light tank. Uh, I'm platooned up with Sam. He's in his M7 Priest uh, SPG, but you're not going to see much of him uh, in this game because he's in. Whoa, we played up. Because he's in an SPG. So, this, um, this gun has. Okay, we're going to take manual control now has 63 average penetration, 50 average damage, and it loads four shells in this autoloader. But you can only see two little cartridge symbols. These little cartridge symbols denote your ammunition. Well, that's because with this gun, and it's not the only gun that's like this, but with this gun, each pull of the trigger releases two shells in relatively quick succession. So you get four shells, but not all of them are going to be fully uh, aimed. And you'll see what I mean uh, about the quick succession thing. Um, so, this is on Prokhorovka. It's a very open map, which is not the light autoloader's natural environment. It likes to be at point blank range, as I mentioned in the garage, just firing into someone. But there we go, and you're going to get a showing of that in the not too distant future. So, I take aim at these fellows. And despite aiming the shot fairly well, well, firstly you can see that sort of double shot, double tap, quick succession thing. But despite aiming the shot fairly well, um, none of these shots are actually doing any damage. And, and a good number of them are hitting, they're just not penetrating. Now, 63 is it? 63 average damage at tier 3, sorry, average penetration at tier 3 is perfectly good. But it loses penetration with range like you would not believe. Um, you can also, ooh, I take some damage there. You can also see that, um, I mean, this isn't a 100% crew, but this tank does. Hello, M2 Light. Um, 
We missed one of our shots there, but we still managed to put him on two health. Uh, and he's dead. Um, but th this tank really does reload its magazine very quickly. I take a bit more damage there, which is unfortunate, but there we go, them's the brakes. So I know that there's somebody else up there. Um, and, you know, you, judging by the amount of damage I took, it's quite difficult to nail down who it is, because there's a lot of tanks over here with similar calibre guns, but there's a medium three. He has fired. He'll reload in, I guess, something like four or five seconds. And I've got some fire support behind me that puts a shot into him. Unload my magazine into him, leave him on a little sliver of health. He dies to my friends, although I am now on 9 HP. So you can see there the kind of potential that we managed to put 200-ish damage into that same tier medium tank, taking away most of his health, um, not quite all, uh, and someone else was able to finish him off. Now, of course, we're on very low health, which is not really the sort of situation you want to be in any sort of autoloader, but it's less important at lower tiers. Um, and looking at quickly at the enemy team list, the three tier threes I can just clip without worrying about it. All of the, sorry, the three tier twos, I should say. And the tier threes, if they're at full health, I can't just clip them immediately, um, but I can certainly uh, give them some serious problems. But because of my health, I'm playing a little bit more cautiously now. I'm just trying to wait for the game to develop. Moving up here, see if we can spot any things. And if you've lost a lot of health, um, with your autoloaders, don't just rush in. I mean, you have a very powerful gun. You want to try and keep that in the game as long as you possibly can. There's some enemy artillery. Just spotting him. See if my artillery can land a shot on him. As it would be nice. Eventually, I get bored and I fire anyway. Someone's landed a hit on him because he's now on 15 health. Um, but at that sort of range, I was very unlikely to actually do any damage. I appear to be... Oh, they've swept through. It appears they've swept through towards our base. Um, and Sam has been taken out by an M2 medium, probably with a howitzer. Um, so, these sort of combat ranges, as I say, very unlikely to do any damage. Oh, he says, picking up a kill on a T-18. Ha-ha! <laughs> um, did get a little bit lucky there, but I'm certainly not going to complain. So. What does one do now? Well, they've overrun our base. They are at our base, eating our cookies, stealing our things, and defecating all over the place. They are barbarians and Huns, and we need to do something about that. So, we're going to go over towards our base and defend it. And one thing you'll notice with these sort of little pop-pop guns, uh, magazine-fed guns, is the damage racks up very, very quickly. Um, hey, our ally just drowned, which is quite an achievement, considering... You know, I'm not even sure where there is deep enough water on this map to drown if I tried. Oh well. Um, <laughs> they are now capping our base. Um, although we are capping theirs. We're capping it faster than they're capping ours. So this is probably just going to be a case of going back to the base to do a little bit more damage um, before the game ends. But, as I say, the damage on these guns um, racks up very, very quickly indeed. Um... And so at the end of this game, I think I'd done like 700 damage or something stupid. And there they all are. I want to see if I can get some pain on someone before the game ends. Come on. Goodbye, cruiser. And there we go, I pick up a kill before the end of the game as our Panzer 1C spams the map. Uh, incredibly helpfully. So, that was an example of some gameplay in a low tier autoloader and quite how dangerous uh, they can be, despite the fact that this map is not the best suited map to the whole low tier autoloader thing. Alright, time to move on to the next category of autoloader, the light autoloader. Now by this I do not necessarily mean light tanks, Although I think this category is mainly comprised of light tanks plus some mediums thrown in. Basically, how I'm defining as a light, a light autoloader is a tank that has really nice mobility, generally speaking. Um, but the gun isn't really punchy enough to be used at any range with any reliability. So, for example, we'll take the AMX 1375 here, tier 7 French light tank. 
The gun has 144 penetration with regular armor piercing ammo. Now, this is a tier 7 light tank, so it sees tier 8 to 10 tanks. Um, this is not the sort of penetration that you want to be using at range with this weapon. And so, generally speaking, you want to spend the earlier part of the game playing a scout role, even if you're not a light tank, just doing some spotting. Um, if you get the opportunity, maybe putting shots into people's flanks, um, but generally kind of waiting for the battle to progress a bit. Um, trying to make yourself useful, but don't play too aggressively because you can really mop up in the late stages. Um, and this is true of the last two categories of tank, especially here. Your your combat potential increases massively as the game progresses for a very simple reason. If you look at your gun you can work out the maximum amount of damage that you will do with one clip of ammunition. So this has got 135 average damage so it will do 270 with two shots which means that out of six shots it will do 600 plus six times seven. Um, it will do about a thousand damage that's a lie, 270 times 3, <laughs> 600, 810, it will do 810 damage on average with a full magazine. Now no one's really going to have 810 health at the beginning of the game, but as the game progresses, halfway through the game, toward the end of the game, people have been wounded and suddenly their HP pool might be in the 800 region, at which point you can swoop in, pump shicks, shicks, six shells into their backside and then run away giggling, manically. Um, and so you want to play conservatively enough that you are still around in the late game, and as I say, that applies to the last category of uh, autoloaders as well. Um, but because of your gun's relative lack of stopping power, um, you generally can't clip full health tanks, you have to wait for them to be injured, and you don't really want to be using the gun very much at range. Um, it, it's going to have to be your discretion what machines you put into this category, but that's the kind of um, limitations you're working with. The flip side is, generally speaking, this category comprises a lot of light tanks, which are small, mobile, have good camo ratings, um, and some medium tanks, um, depending on the situation. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where the light autoloader uh, finds itself, in my opinion. You want to be opportunistic. It's kind of this... Uh, this predatory mindset that you're running around looking for people with their health in that magic uh, range. So in the case of the 1375, kind of 800 health or lower, they're the sort of people you can hunt. One thing that's also worth noting, um, a lot of the higher tier uh, auto loaders, whether they, uh, sorry, higher tier light auto loaders, um, tend to be French and tend to not carry a huge amount of ammunition. So you can see here the 1375 carries 36 shells. This is another reason why you generally don't want to use these guns at range. You're unlikely to really penetrate many of your shots. You'll probably bounce quite a lot, and therefore you are wasting precious shells. You do not have much ammunition to go around. So, without further ado, show you a bit of gameplay in the 1375. Okay, so here's some light autoloader gameplay, remembering of course that does not necessarily mean light tank, but in this case it is. We are in the AMX 1375, tier 7 French light tank. Uh, I do not have the top engine when I'm playing this, so bear that in mind. This will be fractionally more mobile with the top engine, though not by much. And this is really nice matchmaking. Tier 7 light tank sees tier... 8 to 10 games because it gets scout matchmaking and this is a tier 8 game so this is basically the friendliest matchmaking you're going to get. Um, now initially I'm going to try and take up a spotting location. This gun has 144 average penetration, 135 average damage. Not only is the penetration kind of low, the aim time is not the best um, considering this is an auto loading machine. Uh, the gun dispersion values, the gun bloom, things like that are also pretty darn terrible. Um, and the uh, shell velocity is poor. And all this conspires to mean that you, um, you are likely to bounce shots that you take at range. 
Uh, now I don't have six cents when I'm playing this, so I'm being rather cautious. And basically, I'm spending a lot of my time here looking at enemy tanks and seeing if their turrets are pointing in my general direction. And if they start pointing in my direction, I'm going to back the hell off because I don't want to be shot. So I'm just sitting here with binoculars up, um, spotting all these guys. This is an assault game. We are defending, so they have to come to us. And this means I can light them up. <coughs> um, and let them get shot as they approach. The emphasis, the pressure is very definitely on them. And I'm totally okay with that. So <coughs> I'm being rather patient, just sitting in my bush, not doing anything particularly exciting. Um, you know, and this is light tank gameplay essentially. So we'll just speed through this a little. Um, because this is not special to a an autoloader. This is just the sort of thing you're going to be doing playing an, a light autoloader. So there, Tiger 2 is getting a little bit close for comfort. I don't have the gun depression to actually fire from that position, which in a way is a good thing because it meant I wasn't tempted to. I just couldn't put, point the gun at him without completely exposing myself. And by firing you can sometimes reveal your position. Anyway, Tiger 2 was approaching that position. Never going to take on a Tiger 2 in a close range fight. Entirely non-viable. Go somewhere else. Maybe he'll turn up in a moment. If he keeps attacking up that way, then by coming around here, I should be able to pump some shots into his flank. <coughs> which will be nice. Um, does it work? There we go. There's the Tiger 2 in question. And... Aim. One. Bounces. You can see here that even though we've got his flush side... And he's he's at 280 meters. He's not a huge distance away. Even with his flush side armor, we weren't hitting every, we weren't penetrating every shot. So that's something to be aware of. Anyway, first magazine. Uh, by the look of it, it was four penetrations out of six, which is not too shabby. And we're reloaded. So when it comes to reloading, um, if you're reloading, you might as well relocate, assuming the situation allows you to. Um, so then you can attack the, your enemy from a different direction, an unexpected quarter, and you're less likely to get shot in return. By the same token, if you're going to be relocating somewhere, especially if it's a reasonable distance away, why not take the opportunity to go for a reload? Assuming that you're confident that um, the route you're taking is relatively safe. So, for instance, here, there's, very, there's, there's not going to be anybody um, between me and my destination, so I should be reasonably safe. And so, you know, should have been f uh, absolutely fine just going for a reload at the time. You want to be going into engagements, if you can, with a full magazine of ammunition. Because that's what gets you your advantage over your opponent. If you're going in with one or two shots left in the magazine, and those shots, having been fired, would still leave your opponent with health, then suddenly the advantage is all with them. And while you have a long reload, they can just keep punching you in the face again and again and again. In the case of the engagement on that Tiger 2, I picked the engagement such that I would have somewhere to run to if necessary. If he had pointed his gun round at me, I could have just backed around that um, rock face again. And that's one thing you have to be uh, very careful of with an autoloader. Make sure you have an escape plan so that if it all goes wrong or um, if you don't manage to kill them in one clip, whatever the situation, or you know you're not going to kill them, in, but you still want to go in and do some damage. It just means that you have somewhere to run to so that you don't get the snot beaten out of you. Now, I've said here that I'm going for artillery, and we have a friendly 5100 who is currently on the right-hand side and was calling for help, and in a moment he's going to complain that I didn't stick around and help him out. The reality is, in an auto-loading tank, you cannot hold a location. Why can't you hold a location? Because once you have emptied your magazine, once you've fired those sh six shots, for example, you are completely defenseless for the next, in his case, 50 seconds. Apparently I should be reported because I'm an idiot. No mate, I just relocated. I'm in a light tank. Deal with it. Um, so there's my second magazine and my um, first kill. Um, and we are going to relocate again. I mean, that was just me doing the light tank thing. Any light tank could have done what I just did there. 
The fact that this has a magazine wasn't particularly special to that engagement with the artillery, but nonetheless. So, the score lines are roughly even. They have three tank destroyers remaining and an AMX 5100. Their SU-152 killed our other 5100. Were those two guys platooned? No, they weren't. The AMX, sorry, the AMX, the SU-152, as I say, killed our AMX. Um, so we last saw him up at, up at around F0. There's that E25 left, which is easily the most mobile machine on the enemy team, and is the one that poses the greatest threat to our artillery. And speaking of an E25, there he is on full health. Well, I say full. He's lost 5 HP. Who's counting? T-32 is the only thing between him and our artillery, and whilst he doesn't have an autoloader, his gun fires very, very quickly indeed. He should be able to kill the T-32 in two shots. I fire a shot into his rear, but I get unlucky and it bounces. E-25 is not renowned for its armour at the best of times, but hey-ho, there we go. E-25 kills our T-32 without losing any health. And I'm going to go and deal with him. That looked like our artillery. One of our artillery managed to land a shot in his vicinity as he lost a big fat chunk of health. So, my clip damage is about 800. His health is now about two, 300. I can kill him in less than one magazine. I can kill him in a magazine with shells to spare. So, I am going to go over here toward the E25. Now, I've got it in my mind that he might go for our artillery, so I may well want to defend our artillery. So, I'm just trying to spot him by going along that ridge line. I don't see anything. Someone is capping our base, so I'm thinking that I might have to do something about that. I'm wondering if that's the E25, if he's doubled back and just decided to cap instead, but no, there he is. He is indeed going for our artillery, as I had thought he might. So, as he attacks them, I'm going to come up behind him and give him a bit of surprise butt love. Um, and I'm not going to fire much on the move here because, generally speaking, a lot of autoloaders are bad at firing on the move, unless you're at very, very close range. I decide to there because I've got ammunition to spare. So you're generally bad at firing on the move. Go for a uh, reload straight away as well. And you're generally bad at firing on the move, so you want to fire stationary uh, if at all possible. Now I'm going for an immediate reload because I don't want to go after the guy in our capture circle with half a magazine remaining. Oh good lord, there's an SU-152, let's get out of his way as quick as I can. Oh, he's taking a bit of a battering. I don't want to take on the guy in the capture circle who is now apparently an AMX 5100 without a full magazine, if I can possibly avoid it. And I can avoid it, and I'm going to be relocating anyway, so I might as well take the opportunity to reload. And that just leaves the AMX 5100 in our base. And there's, there's about as much time left in the game as there is left on his capture counter. So I need the reset. And I got it. It looks like by damaging his track. But never mind. Another shot in. I could have played this better, but I don't really care. And one more shot. And he kills me just as the, <laughs> just as the battle timer hits zero. So there we go. There was a bit of action in a light auto-loading machine. Um... So we'll jump back to the garage and then talk about the final category that I would like to mention. Alright, so for the final category of autoloading machine, we have the heavy autoloader. Now, to stress again, this does not necessarily mean that these are all heavy tanks. Uh, there may be some mediums thrown in here as well. Um, what defines a heavy autoloader? Well, a few things. Firstly, their mobility may still be good, but it's not lightning fast. It's not as good as the light autoloaders, but generally speaking the mobility is still pretty decent. Two, they tend to be a lot larger. So here for example is the AMX 5100 French tier 8 heavy tank and if we compare this with the AMX 1375 from earlier on boom, there we go. The 5100 is clearly a lot larger. Now the 5100 is actually a heavy tank, or defined as a heavy tank, so you shouldn't be surprised that it's larger and it's heavier and it's less mobile. Um, and because it's larger, you want to be a little bit more cautious with how you play at the beginning. Your camo rating is not as good, um, you will get spotted a lot more readily, and generally speaking, autoloaders of any description lack armour. So you're going to get hit and penetrated a lot, and it's going to be messy. 
Um, finally, the stopping power of the gun is significantly better than their light um, counterparts. Uh, both in terms of penetration and raw alpha damage and clip damage. So, for example, um, if we were looking at the top gun on the 5100, 100mm here, it does 300 damage per shot, 6 shells in the magazine. That means this thing outputs an average clip damage of 1800. Well, it only has 1400 health. In fact, if you look at tier 9 tanks, a lot of them fall into that clipping range. And so you have the firepower, if you can unload a complete magazine into someone, to completely wreck their day. Also, generally speaking, you have got uh, regular matchmaking. None of these have scout matchmaking. So you are more valuable to your team. And so you generally want to be a little bit more cautious with the gameplay of these things. So, you might still want to do a bit of spotting toward the beginning of the game. But I would argue, probably more often than not, you want to be... Um, toward the beginning of the game, providing fire support, sniping, shooting from a distance, making sure that you have not been spotted, and yet that you are still able to assist your team and plunk in, uh, plump in the damage. Once you get towards the latter part of the game, then you can start running around just clipping people to death for their remaining health, and at that point you can then start trading your own health um, with enemy tanks to kill them. So say for example you come around the corner and you encounter an IS-3, he shoots you once, he does 390 damage, you shoot him three times for 900 and kill him. 400 damage to you, 900 to him. Seems like a good trade to me. But really you want to be doing that towards the end of the game rather than at the beginning. And you have to be very very cautious about pushing the pace with any sort of autoloader um, because generally speaking you have terrible terrible armor. Is there anything else I wanted to say about autoloaders? Or heavy autoloaders? Nah, not for now. Let's just jump into a little bit of gameplay and hopefully I can show you the sort of thing I mean. Okay, here's the third bit of gameplay I wanted to show you. So this is in a heavy autoloader. This is the tier 8 French heavy tank, the AMX 5100. Now remembering, hey look, it's a replay derpery. Remembering, of course, that despite the fact that it's called a heavy tank, that doesn't really mean it is a heavy tank, it's a heavy autoloader. Um, we're not going to go into the town and brawl. We're just not. It's a terrible idea. Remembering, I do not have the top gun on this at the moment uh, as I play this game. So this gets a six shell autoloader. Each shell does 240 damage, has 212 penetration. This is a tier 8 game, so the penetration is easily... Um, easily enough for what we want to do. <laughs> you can see in chat I say, well, so far I hate this tank. I'd really not been getting on with this, but, you know, nonetheless, um, I think this is a tank with a lot of potential, but you have to be in the right mindset for it. You have to have experience at using it, and also it requires kind of the right map and things like that. I also don't have a 100% crew as I'm playing this, I should like to point out. So, what are we actually going to do? Well, I'm actually going to head toward the sort of village at about E0. So let's forget this is a heavy tank. Think more that this is a very large light or medium tank with a very powerful gun. It's a better way of thinking about it. T44 has gone to an aggressive spot at E6. So we do need to be a little bit careful about that. What have I got up here as well? There's a VK2801. Um, Alpha Clarungs, Panzer Panther, and Type 58. There's also a tank destroyer down there. What tank destroyer is it? Uh, Yag Tiger 88. Okay, so we have a little bit of support. So initially, oh, ELC AMX. Uh, rather than getting into close range fisticuffs with many people, although having said that, hello little ELC, no. Um, we're more trying to get long range shots on people, so we're being rather circumspect here. Our armor is absolutely terrible. We do not have that much health. 1400 is okay for a tier 8 tank. Now, it'd be alright for a tier 8 medium tank, but it's low for a tier 8 heavy, if that makes sense. We got spotted there. Ooh, IS Fluffsy shot. One shot into him. Two into him. Three, trying to hide as much of my, my tank from his gun as I can. Four, I take a hit for my troubles. Five, manage to kill him. Um, 
but the tracks eat that shot, which is kind of lucky. I have one shell left in my magazine, someone kills that ELC AMX, so I reload it. If you've got one shell left in your magazine, there's no, not really that much point keeping it around most of the time, as it just means that um, if you meet someone, you fire a shot, they fire a shot, you reload your magazine for several years, they kill you. But there, the IS, you can see what we were able to do to him. We got lucky with the our tracks eating his shell, but nonetheless, uh, he only managed to put one shot into us. At the same time, we were able to put five shots into him and kill him. And there's the power of an autoloader. So we're just hunting this T-34 now, who is on fire and low health, and Bulldog finishes him off. Alas, we get spotted as we approach him. So the scoreline is currently six kills to six. We've fired one magazine so far, and it was a good magazine. So we're just looking for our next target. There's a KV-3 over there. Now these shots are at distance, so we're not going to get spotted, but KV-3 is a pretty tough target and he's reasonably well angled. That shot misses completely. Just waiting for the gun to aim in. That one nails him. That one also gets him. Two more shots should kill him. I take a shot from the KV-3. I think it's a blind shot though, and I get a little bit lucky in that it, my tracks eat it. And I just decide to blind fire his last known location while I think he's tracked to reload my magazine. AMX 5100 gets a good slab of ammunition, so you can be a little bit freer with that ammo. And I get a bit lucky, he's still there, and I kill him. But I took the shot because I didn't have many shells left in my magazine. So I'd have to be reloading anyway. Um, and because my ammunition is not particularly tight with this tank, I thought I might as well plump those last shots into his last location and try and get some more damage in, and it worked. So, T44 now. We've reloaded our magazine. Long aim time, as you can see. T44 puts a shot into me. I miss him, alas. And again... Long aim time and dubious accuracy mean that shooting tanks on the move is not easy. And there you can see that was a bad magazine. We took at least two damaging shots there in return for one on a T-44. That was a bad trade. But there we go, such things happen. Hitting moving targets at range with um, French autoloaders is not easy. There's only four of them, three of them left. And we're reloading our magazine. And there's a Borsig over there, so we're going to see if we can get some shots on him. Magazine is almost reloaded, and there we go. We're going to use the last few seconds of magazine reload to aim in on this Borsig. One shot into him. Someone else puts a shot in. That shot misses. And we manage to kill him, but we get spotted for our privilege. Chiri over there. Decides that discretion is the better part of valour. My first shot misses him. Second shot hits him. T-44 takes out my tracks. Someone kills the T-44. My crew put the tracks back on. I had one shell remaining. And so I reload. Someone's saying, oh my god, 5100. I'm not really sure why they're saying that, to be honest. But whatever. And so, almost finished reloading. There's just this Chibi left. He also gets an autoloader, but his is a very different type of gun. He gets three shells each with 130 average damage and then reloads for about 10 seconds. I've got the health, basically, to just tank this guy and clip him. So that's essentially what I'm going to do. He uh, flubs his first shot. And I will need, on average, three penetrating hits to take this guy out. There's one. Only takes two, as someone else shoots him as well, and that's the game. So there, hopefully, you get an idea of the power of a heavy autoloader, as I would call it. You know, the ability to either horribly injure or completely destroy um, an enemy tank with your magazine. Um, but bad gun handling stats, no armor, mobility's all right, but not that special. You know, things like that to bear in mind. Anyway, that was the third game I wanted to go and show you. 
Um, so we will just jump back into the garage in a sec. Okay, so you've seen some gameplay just for some final thoughts for you. A lot of the time when people come across an auto-loading machine for the first time, they think how horrifically overpowered it is. Um, and that's because they are only seeing the plus side of the machine. They come with a lot of negatives to offset that gun performance. Things like terrible armor, bad gun depression, bad gun elevation. Often the gun has terrible gun handling stats. Maybe it has poor penetration. Um, the mobility may be fairly good or it may be a little bit dubious. You know, it, it, it's not as straightforward as just saying they're, auto, they're, they're overpowered, they're amazing. Um, they have an awful lot of potential. 5100, for example, you run around and you can basically kill any tier 8 tank, a lot of tier 9 tanks, um, horribly maim some tier 9 and, and some tier 10 tanks um, with this gun. But what's the flip side of that? Well, the flip side is that despite the fact that you are a heavy tank, quote unquote, you do not have the armor to push the tempo of the match. Net result, you tend to be quite reliant on your team in an auto loader. I mean, for example, I mentioned the top gun of the 5100 earlier on. The point I didn't mention is that this thing takes 50 seconds to load the magazine. It takes almost a minute. That's almost a minute where you are basically completely defenseless. Uh, and you have to rely on the rest of your team. Uh, you can't do a great deal of much yourself. Well, you can't shoot anything yourself. And so you have to develop this predatory playstyle almost where you pick on the weak and the wounded and you try and get the hell out of dodge before anyone shoots you back. Um, there's a lot of skill to knowing when to take damage, when not to take damage in an autoloader, when you can rely on your team, when you can't. Um, the list goes on, but at the end of the day they're a tank with a lot of potential but they are not beginner friendly. An experienced player, a good player in an autoloading tank that they are familiar with can be absolutely devastating, but if you are inexperienced with it or you are a less good player, you're going to really struggle. Um, you know, they're not, you can't just drive forwards and do amazingly well with them. Conversely, if you were in a 5100, for instance, you might be able to just drive forward, plonk 1800 damage into someone's face, get killed for your trouble, and that's it. Think that you've done a good job. You haven't. But there we go. So. Um, oh, one thing I, I really should emphasize, I can't emphasize enough, with an autoloader, always, always have an exit strategy. Um, you have a set number of shells in your magazine, and once they are gone, you are left defenseless for, well, depending on the machine, it could be five seconds, it could be a minute or something. So you need to have a plan to run away, get out of there, go somewhere else, um, and not die, rather than just going in, emptying your magazine, and that's it. So it's great if you have a platoon mate who can cover you while you're reloading, but if you're just playing solo, it means you're reliant on the rest of your team, and it means that you need to go into a situation, as I say, with a clear, well-thought-out idea in your head of how you're going to get out of it in one piece. Anyway, I hope that's given you a, a rough idea of what auto-loading machines are like, um, and hopefully... Uh, just giving you some information that might allow you to get started with the whole auto loading thing. As I say, it's not a review or a guide designed for those people who know what they're doing and they're just trying to fine hone their techniques. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it, possibly even found it vaguely informative. Uh, thank you for watching and I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.